Okay, so I'm making a pretty bold statement here. I'm saying that 99% of math students will make this error. Well, I don't know if it's exactly 99%, but I can tell you right now, the great majority of math students somewhere along the line, uh, whether they're learning basic math, algebra, or beyond, will make this error. This error is easy to make, especially when you're new at mathematics. Now, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to actually do this problem, and then of course, I'm gonna show you what the answer is, and we're gonna discuss this error. But if you're gonna make this error, I want you to make this with me so we can straighten out any uh, kind of misunderstandings that you might have. So the next time you go to take a math quiz or a test, you will ace it. So here's the question. So here I have an, uh, an expression, and what I want you to do is to simplify this expression. Now, uh, this expression may not be able to be simplified, all right? So it can be simplified or it cannot be simplified. If it can be simpl uh, simplified, what is the answer? Go ahead and put that into the comment section if you think you know how to do this. And of course, I'm gonna show you the right answer and we're gonna discuss this error that so many students tend to make, and I'm sure I made this many, many times through the years as well. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It's my passion to teach mathematics. I love teaching math. And I can tell you right now, all those years have taught me one thing, and that is all students, especially those students who tend to fail math or hate math, all students can be successful in mathematics. Now, some students are going to love math and just be, you know, go on to become engineers. But some of you out there hate math. You're just looking desperately to just pass your math class. Listen, I get it. But you can be successful. What you need is encouragement and, most importantly, great math instruction. Clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe you're studying for uh, some sort of special test that has math on it. I'm talking about things like the GED SAT, ACT, ASVAB, GED, well, I already said GED, GMAT, GRE. I can go on and on and on. Literally in, in a test prep category, there's so many tests out there. And by the way, a lot of you are going to be taking these type of tests. You don't even realize it. If you're going into uh, college, you're going to be taking placement exams, entrance exams. If you're going to some sort of vocational training, you're also going to have to take these very important tests. Anyways, that's just a little heads up that you may not even realize that you're going to need to take a particular test in your future. By the way, if you homeschool mathematics, I also can help you out. So check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that cover all these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in this uh, the description. Now, hopefully you're taking awesome math notes. If you're not taking any notes or if you take terrible notes like I did way back in the good old days, you have to learn how to improve, okay? If you improve your notes, everything else in math will become much, much easier. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this and let's see if you are going to make this error. Okay, so remember, the question is, can this be simplified? And yes, it can. Here is the answer. Okay, we have t cubed plus t squared over t squared. The answer is t plus 1. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, you're probably uh, breathing a sigh of relief. You're saying, oh my goodness, I didn't make this error. But you're probably still interested. Hey, what is this error? Okay, even though you got this correct, I could tell you, you probably have made this error, almost guarantee you uh, made this particular error in the past. But anyways, let's go ahead and celebrate your success for getting this problem right. I got to give you a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and a few stars. So you can be like, just have an extra special day. Now, the best part of being a math teacher is when you get to write this stuff uh, on a student's paper. No one likes to write F's and C's. As a matter of fact, I think some uh, some schools these days don't even allow that, okay? Well, here's the deal, right? Math is a process, and if you don't get things wrong, it's not the end of the world, right? Making mistakes is part of learning. And so let's talk about this error right now. Okay, so this was the correct answer, but let's go and erase that for a second. How many of you did this? Okay, you probably said, oh, I have a T squared there, a T squared there. I'm going to go ahead and cross cancel those and look at this. The answer is t cubed. Now, if you made this mistake, 
you are in good company, okay? Many, many great math students, successful math students have made this error. It's just so tempting to do this, okay? And uh, I know I've done this a million times. And when you look at students' works, uh, students' uh, math work, you know, as a math teacher, you see, you know, all the errors that students tend to make. And this is a very, very common one. Now, let's take a look at a couple other problems here that uh, would illustrate this same error in action. For example, if I had x plus y over x, you know, a lot of students will be, you know, they'll see these x's here and they'll be like, oh, wow, I could just get rid of these right there. So that's a y. Uh, you know, of course, you could see this in any form or fashion, 2m squared minus m plus 1 over uh, 2m squared. It's tempting to, you know, see these common terms and just kind of cross cancel them. Now, this is absolutely incorrect, and we're going <laughs> to look at this in uh, more detail. But if you tend to make this mistake, you're not alone. Now, the reason why students, I think, make this error is because they kind of forget that we're dealing with a sum or a difference. Okay. Uh, by the way, the same error could be made like this. If I made this into subtraction and you went like, oh, t squared, and you cross cancel those, and there was t cubed, that's the same error. So anytime you're dealing with a sum or difference, you have to be uh, on uh, the lookout to not make this error. Now, here is where I think students get confused. Now, if this uh, problem was t cubed times t squared over t squared. Well, here, absolutely, you can cross cancel these like factors. Okay, well, this is a factor and this is a factor down here. You could cross cancel these factors and the answer here would in fact be t cubed. All right, but there's a huge difference between uh, terms that are separated by multiplication because these here, right, this is a product and these are factors of that product. So when you have a um, uh, factor and the same factor down in the denominator in, as in the numerator, you can cross cancel. We do this all the time with regular fractions. So for example, if you have 10 over 20, what are you doing? Well, 10 is the same thing as what? Two times five and 20 is the same thing as two times 10. Now I can reduce this further. I just wanna break this up this way. If you see a two and a two, you're like, oh, okay, these are like factors. I could cross cancel these guys, and then I'm left with five tenths. And of course, you can uh, reduce this uh, into one half, right? Of course, 10 over 20, you can write that as one times 10 over uh, two. Uh, well, we would do it like this. Yeah, two times 10, that's 20. And then of course, these tens cross cancel, and you're left with one half. So these are factors. These are numbers that are separated by multiplication, right? Multiplication, huge, huge, huge difference when numbers or terms, algebraic terms, um, are separated by addition and subtraction. This is a sum or a difference, and uh, students sometimes will confuse this. Matter of fact, uh, very often they will. Listen, I don't make the rules in math. I just got to follow them just like you. So anytime you see sums or differences, they have to be on the lookout. So let's go ahead and explore this a little bit further because the better you understand this mistake, the better you'll be able to avoid it. So uh, one thing that you can do, which is a great tool in algebra, is if you're not sure, let's say you're looking at this, you're like, okay, I'm not sure. I can't remember what that guy on YouTube was telling me. Can I do this? I can't. Well, listen, one thing you can do always in algebra, which is an awesome little tool, is replace variables with numbers, okay? And just kind of uh, see if you can figure out what's going on when you replace these variables with numbers. So for example, what if I had, instead of T, I have here T, T, and T. These are all the same uh, variables. So let's put two, two, and two, okay? So here I would have two cubed plus two squared over two squared. So this would be the respective problem. Now here, it's still tempting to want to cross cancel these things but maybe you you, you uh, might say to yourself, all right, let me just kind of figure this out. Two cubed is eight. That's two times two uh, times two. That's eight. And then two squared is four. And then I have two squared down here. That is four. So looking at this problem, eight plus four over four, again, very tempting to cross cancel these fours. And that's what I'm, I'm talking about here. 
that students even like in basic mathematics will tend to make this error. It's a super common error, all right? So some of you out there, maybe that might be like in fifth grade, sixth grade, you could very well be making this error. But here's the deal. This addition sign, this is a sum, all right? As some, i.e., this is one number, one value. And it's very helpful to put parentheses around a sum or difference just to kind of accentuate that, hey, you know, this is one thing. Now, if I put parentheses around this uh, expression right there, that might have um, kind of mentally helped some of you out there to say, ooh, I don't know if I can actually, you know, do this right there. Uh, same thing here. But again, this is a very subtle type of thing. But let's go ahead and just follow this through. Remember, in the order of operations, you got to do what's inside parentheses. You got to do addition up here. Um, you got, well, uh, again, this is a group, all right? There's parentheses around this, even though some of you don't write this. We got to take care of this before we actually simplify this fraction here. So 8 plus 4 is 12, right? Uh, so this would, uh, this problem really is 12 divided by 4. 12 divided by 4 is, of course, 3. That is the actual answer, all right? So uh, let's take a look at what would happen. If you say, oh, all right, you're satisfied with 8, that this problem here, uh, 2 cubed plus 2 squared over 2 squared, the answer is, in fact, 3. Okay, you're like, okay, that's 3. So test your little theory out here. As bad as you want to do this, uh, the answer would be 8, right? If you cross-cancel those four, uh, 4s, 8 plus 4 over 4, you know this, uh, this is 12 divided by 4, which is 3. But if you went like this and you uh, cross-cancel these, well, you would end up with 8, and that should tell you that, hmm, I don't think that is correct. And you should follow that instinct, all right? So when in doubt, when it comes to algebra or some things, or if you want to take a, a step in algebra, put some numbers in that could help you uh, avoid making an error. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about how we got the correct answer. So what we had to do was to factor out the greatest common factor, and that's what you always want to do when you're dealing with sums and differences. And uh, this is a kind of a different discussion if you don't understand the GCF. But the greatest common factor here is t squared. I can factor out a t squared because if I multiply t squared by t, I'm going to get back to t cubed. All right, so t squared times t or t to the first is t to the third power. Remember, if the bases are the same, you add the exponents, so that's t cubed. Now, at this point in the conversation, um, if you're lost, you're like, okay, you, um, you're like, uh, I'm very confused right now. Well, that's you know a, a good thing because it's uh, telling you know it's telling you that you don't understand powers and exponents and maybe the greatest common factor. So now you, at least you know what you don't know, and that's a big big deal in uh, in terms of improving. If you're like, you know, I don't know, understand, I don't even know what I don't know. Well, then how are you going to work on, um, you know, improving? So let me give you a couple quick suggestions here if you're already kind of lost with this. We are dealing with algebra at this point. So I would suggest two courses of mine, pre-algebra or algebra one. You can find those in my math help program. I also have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel. I think I'm up to like almost 1,700 videos on my channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 years. So you know, I lose track of, of stuff, but I teach from basic math to calculus. So, you know, you can scour through my YouTube videos. I'm pretty sure I have a lot on the GCF as well. Anyways, so you got to understand how to factor out the GCF. So you can always check your work. T squared times T, it gets me back to T cubed. And then T squared times 1 gets me back to T squared. And, of course, I have T squared down here in the denominator. Now, at this point, these are factors, okay? Let's talk about the difference between uh, t and 1 right here. This is a sum, but t squared, and let me use a different color here, t squared and, whoops, I wanted to use blue. Okay, here we go. t squared times t plus 1. This is multiplication here. So these are factors. So here you actually can now cross out those like factors and that leads us to t plus 1. Okay, and you can see the same thing uh, if we replace our t's with 2's, right? So here is our problem that we just did where it was uh, 8 plus 4 over 4. 
I have two cubed plus uh, two squared over two squared. Well, what's the greatest common factor? Two squared, okay, because two squared times two to the first gets me back to two cubed, and then two squared times one gets me back to two squared. So here, again, you have um, uh, two factors here. This is a factor, okay? So I can cross-cancel those factors, which leaves me with two plus one as the answer. And two plus one, the last time I checked, is three, which, of course, is the same thing as uh, us figuring it out this way. So again, you know, when it comes to algebra or mathematics, a lot of these rules that you learn in, you know, basic arithmetic carry through algebra. Sometimes um, students, it's kind of funny, they tend to make, they tend to do pretty well, let's say, in arithmetic, but when they get to algebra, they start making this mistake, where when they were back in the fifth grade or sixth grade, they were doing very well. And why is that? Well, I don't know. I do have some theories, because a lot of students, when they uh, are taking algebra, they're in high school and they are very distracted. Believe me when I tell you, I've taught uh, sixth grade through 12th grade, and you can see the differences, especially when students are like, you know, ninth and 10th grade, very, very distracting, you know, in class. Hey, listen, I know I was not a perfect student, and that's why I can tell you right now, listen, if you are, uh, uh, if you're trying, if you're an adult, I'm talking about someone who's been out of school for many years. Don't judge your ability to do math by looking back in your high school days, okay? If you, Because all of us were highly distracted. Some of us were math superstars. If some of you are in high school right now and you're like, oh, no, I'm on top of that, well, then you're way ahead of the curve because your ability to focus in a highly distracted uh, environment is critical to success. But uh, most of us were very distracted in high school. And you look back and like, I didn't, I was terrible in math. Listen, don't judge yourself of how well you did in math in high school. It has nothing to do with your potential or your ability to learn mathematics because you were probably very distracted. And if you're trying to do math uh, while you're distracted, guess what? It's just like driving while distracted. Good things do not happen. Okay, so if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.